Given that we are literally inundated on all sides by these response video channels, all desperately trying to outpone each other, the irony is not lost on me that I actually have to make this correction video myself. Wait, wait, Coltane? Uh, you're addressing criticism? Will Senpai notice me? Given that we are literally inundated on all sides- Um, massive nitpick here, but since you're a super highbrow intellectual, or at least you pretend to be, um, well, literally means that you would have to be inundated on all literal sides. Like, there would have to be, like, screens on every single surface of your room for your point to be- accurate. Uh, I, I'm just saying, this is a massive nitpick, but I'm just gonna be a snarky cunt today. By these response video channels, all desperately trying to outpone each other. Poisoning the well. We're off to a great start, Coltane. You know, if you were talking about dedicated ponies channels, maybe like, I don't know, Undoomed, Bearing, I don't necessarily think that it would be completely accurate to characterise them like that, but there's maybe possibly slightly a nugget of truth in there, but that's not even a topic of discussion at this point, because that's not who you're talking about. You're talking about myself and Armored Skeptic. Neither of us are actually dedicated ponies channels. We are response video channels, but our intention is not to outpone people. We do not focus on one-upping people as a sort of a primary motivator of our channel. Our primary motivator is to convince people of things, is to make sure that we are getting as close to the truth as possible. I have a little bit more activism in, in, on my channel. I do the odd bit of, uh, you know, sharing petitions and shit. The little I can do. And um, Skeptic's more of a, an educator. And that's fine. I, uh, I don't necessarily think either of these forms of content are bad. And they're definitely not the way you're characterizing them to be, Coltane. We're not, um, like, trying to one-up people. And that's why he's trying to... making us out like that. Because if that's that's what we're trying to do, if we're just trying to, to out-pwn people and we're really desperate, then our intellectual sort of um, rigor isn't going to be as high, at least in the minds of a lot of viewers. We're not going to be taken as serious detractors if someone is criticized. So, I like how you had to insult us before we even came on screen. It really shows a lot about your character. And if this is the highest brow of, of um, MGTOW content, then it really shows the kinds of people we're dealing with and the reason I have left this fucking cult. The irony is not lost on me that I actually have to make this correction video myself. Ironic that you're the one criticizing your own video. No, no. Um, the ir it's not ironic because you're just a really good fucking sophist. And the thing is, with good sophists, is that they tend to spread their shit out. They they tend to make long form content and make a very uh, very few and very small leaps in logic, and then they get to crazy conclusions. But there's a lot of actually um, logically consistent stuff in the whole video. Uh, so you, if you are going to do a full response to it, you'd end up repeating yourself constantly, and it's easier to get, it's easier to fall for it because the the smaller leaps in logic that are harder to see, and in a, a a sea of reasonable stuff, a sea of logically consistent stuff, spotting the 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 tiny points where someone's gone wrong, well, um, they they're not exactly easy to do. It does take someone with a bit more, um, with, with a slightly finer toothed comb. That's why it took me so long to actually get to your video. Because, um, I, I, I just didn't know how I was going to even format that. And I thought, holy shit, what I can do is I can just chuck this in the Tilda video and I'll just do, a, um, I'll just do a single criticism of just the start bit. Which I thought was fair enough. Um, and I had so many people say, oh... Holy shit, he pulled the wall over my eyes. Oh my god, I was... I was actually... Um, I didn't notice that. 
and people won't notice that because of the way your content is structured. Yeah, you know, I'm always going to get the you're going for low hanging fruit thing. It it's funny. hard to make the funny, uh, the, the serious ones and the smart ones funny. You have to trust me, people, that I know what I'm doing. If I say I can't debunk something because it's boring, I'm not going to do it because nobody's going to watch it. It's not going to achieve its goal of convincing people because nobody's going to ever watch it anyways. And this is what I meant about the whole desperately trying to outpone people. Skeptic's primary motivator here seems to be, at least from his own words, to educate and convince. And the whole entertainment part is a secondary thing. It's just a, I understand this is necessary for my primary goal to be achieved. So, um, yeah, painting him as a, a pony's channel, just trying to one-up people, not really fair, is it? You have to trust me, people, that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, that, that, that's listen and believe. It's completely unfounded that he knows what he's doing. I mean, the, the extremely successful channel with 268,000 subscribers. That That's just, um, I don't know. That, that's, that, that has nothing to do with his capability of making YouTube videos. And actually gaining an audience and getting people to watch his videos. Totally. What planet are you on, Colty? You know, this is what pisses me off about people calling, uh, saying about, oh, you shouldn't go after the low-hanging fruit. Well, what is the low-hanging fruit at this point? If this is, this is supposed to be the guy who's, I don't know, um, above all of the other MGTOWs. He, he's one of the, the highbrow, super-intelligent researcher types. And this is his level of argument. The guy with the super-successful channel, no, he has no idea how to make YouTube videos. That's just an unfounded statement. What? the fuck are you on? As clearly demonstrated by our dear friend, colleague, and supposed ally Sir Skeptolot, intellectual rigour is kind of outside the wheelhouse of these anti-feminist types. Look, if a Skeptic has been recommended, I don't know, one of your videos, and has said, look, I can't go after that one, I can't break it down because it's boring, He's not lacking intellectual rigor. He might actually go through your video and actually analyze the positions and actually go through in his own mind and argue against it, but he might not actually make it into a video and upload it because it would be boring. A lacking intellectual rigor would be automatically dismissing every single um, point you have out of hand because you're boring. And you don't actually go into this. You don't go into uh, exactly why you think it's in, uh, lacking intellectual rigor. You just accuse him of it. You're not going after me, so you're being dishonest. It's a fucking petulant bullshit. Stop being a child. Not everything revolves around you, Coltane, but you're getting me. Regarding my own work, certain detractors have been singularly focused on the fact that OkCupid okay and Tinder data couldn't possibly be representative of gender differences in wider relationship trends. He must be making a fallacy of equivocation. For someone talking about fucking intellectual rigour, not only did you not show any of the criticism you were actually given directly, you also didn't even cite your sources. I mean... It's, it's almost like you're a massive fucking hypocrite. And it's almost like you know you're bullshitting. Because otherwise, you would have been able to very easily respond to those points. But um, let's actually go back and compare his characterization of my criticism with my actual criticism. Take it away, old me. I'll brush over your insinuation that men's only worth to women is material wealth and get into the actual science of the issue. Uh, and, well, the science of the issue. And you haven't produced any of your own standalone content on this, so I'm going to have to do the next best thing, which is the standalone content you uploaded on this, produced by another YouTuber, the aforementioned Coltane. Let's do it your way. TL Deer, 
Coltane doesn't understand relationships or attraction. Um, this is the OK Cupid research blog post that often gets cited. Quote, Our chart shows how men have rated women on a scale from 0 to 5. The curve is symmetric and surprisingly charitable. A woman is as likely to be considered extremely ugly as extremely beautiful, and the majority of women have been rated about medium. The chart looks normalised even though it is just the unfiltered opinion of our male users, end quote. Quote, as you can see from the grey line, women rate an incredible 80% of guys as worse looking than medium. Very harsh, end quote. Now, this data from OkCupid is corroborated by other sources. Um, Tinder, for example, also shows a very clear gender differential with women swiping right only 15% of the time versus men swiping right 47% of the time. I actually find this fact particularly interesting, that on, on a platform like Tinder, which rates and judges individuals purely on the basis of looks. And this is also very important. So was the data from OkCupid. Okay we see such a wide gender disparity in male versus female appraisal of attractiveness. So what can we get from this? Women are more picky when it comes to appearance than men, at least on OkCupid okay and Tinder. Okay, could we go further? Men have a harder time finding success on these sites because the likelihood of initiating interactions being so heavily based on appearance, meaning men have an automatic handicap or women have a head start, depending on how you look at it. Sure, there's a case to be made there. Could you even go so far as to say that this is anything to do with the current culture applauding women for having extremely unrealistic standards for their partners while shaming men for having any standards at all, skewing the data? I'd say that's almost definitely a factor. But the data here isn't necessarily representative of the, the entire population. One's a dating site and one's a hookup website, meaning selection bias is going to play a part. And since neither of these have shown real attempts to control for variables, meaning they're not exactly scientific studies, the amount you can extrapolate from this into the real world is not much. Well, what we end up with is essentially a transfer function or S-curve. Uh, these are very important in machine learning systems for determining the likelihood that a, a specific piece of input data has crossed a certain learned threshold. It almost sounds like he knows what he's doing. Um, in this case, the input data is the man's relative population ranking, and the output is the likelihood that women will find him attractive. So, assuming that Mark is in the 90th percentile, women would find him very attractive. Uh, but as he approaches and crosses that attraction threshold into undesirability, his perceived sexual and social market value starts to plummet in the eyes of women. You see, the same transfer function applies to women too. The attraction threshold for women is much more reasonable. When we draw the transfer function for women on the same graph, uh, with their attraction threshold being at about 50%, um, a, a massive 30 percentiles lower than men. Now, I could beat you again over the head with the applying to the entire population, but I won't. Um, let's go into what he means by attractiveness. Uh, if we consider that hypergamy, specifically the provision of resources, is probably the driving factor behind female reproductive choices, and I'm talking serious long-term relationship investment here, not not a drunken hookup with some chiselled guy at the club. You see what he did there? He's taken the original attractiveness variable, which was measured by some ratings of photos on a survey in Swipes Right, and applied them to a graph that actually measures the success of long-term relationships based upon a man's material wealth. Two very, very different things. And I guess a woman's... Actually, I don't know. Maybe physical appearance? He doesn't actually say, so it's up to you, really. But he managed to hide this by using the same term for both, sneakily changing the definition without you noticing, otherwise known as equivocation. Which is why, if you go and watch the video, there's a bunch of fluff in between. It's designed to allow him to give... It gives him enough time to repeat the word and permutations of the word attractive enough times so that it makes you think that what was originally measured by the surveys was some kind of abstract attractiveness that can be applied to long-term relationships rather than pure physical appearance. I.e. Ratings of photos on fucking OkCupid and swipes right on fucking Tinder.
But, Carl Sagan, if you do end up watching this, well done. Well played, my good sir. You didn't just manage to fool at least 2,000 people and upwards of maybe 10,000. You managed to pull one over on Teal Deer. That's fucking impressive. So, all I can say is bravo. The problem that should be immediately clear is that there is going to be an extremely large difference of perceived social value in all of these relationships. You see, even though two people may exist in the exact same percentile on this population graph ranking relative attractiveness, in her mind she sees herself as an 8 dating a 3. To her, it's a bad reproductive investment, but due to market pressures, i.e. she doesn't want to be lonely or she wants to start a family, these are the only men available in her relative population percentile, so she goes ahead and makes the relationship investment anyway. Over time, this perception that she's invested in worthless relationship stock, uh, somebody who's fundamentally not good enough for her, will only lead to discontent and eventual divorce. So, you use data that's unrepresentative, applied the measure of attractiveness to something entirely different to the original data, and then I'm supposed to believe that this ever-changing variable of attractiveness is the defining factor in relationship success. That people of comparable attractiveness fare better th together than incomparable. Because the partner will assume themselves superior to the other partner based upon nothing more than this nebula factor that they're somehow magically aware of. And divorce over it. And this explains the divorce rate. I'm sorry. This is not only pathetic pseudoscience, it's also insanely reductionistic. It, it just doesn't in any way take into account the nuances of human interaction. It, it doesn't talk about how different personality traits just interact with each other on the base level, and how these different concentrations of said traits in men and women may have an effect on gender dynamics. It doesn't say anything about how plenty of relationships are failing over purely logistical reasons that cause stress. Uh, the death of a relative or a loss of a job can just make uh, uh, make life more stressful for that couple. And then, because it's more stressful, they have more arguments, and then they end up hating each other, not because of some kind of hypergamous instinct that women have, but just because they're humans, and they have emotional reactions to bad things happening. And bad things happen to people all the fucking time. I'm sorry. This isn't science. This is propaganda dressed up as science. Regarding my own work, certain detractors have been singularly focused on the fact that OkCupid okay and Tinder data couldn't possibly be representative of gender differences in wider relationship trends. He must be making a fallacy of equivocation. Very different, right? I mean, for one, I didn't say that they could not at all ever be representative and they had no use whatsoever. I was just saying that there was going to be some selection bias and they weren't representative. That doesn't necessarily mean the numbers are 100% inaccurate and 100% completely useless. No, I said they could be very useful for those sites, but not for the entire population, especially when what they were measuring was purely based on appearance. Both studies said that. Which means that they can't be extrapolated to long-term relationship success, unless you think long-term relationship success is purely based on appearance. That was what I was saying you were equivocating on, Coltane. They were two separate criticisms. The equivocation was one, and the unrepresentative sample size was another. But you managed to compare, just chuck them all together because, well, you're not exactly a king of intellectual rigor yourself. You're a massive fucking hypocrite. So, fuck you. All the while, without actually bothering to, you know, go to all that trouble themselves of of actually opening a, a new browser tab and searching those Googles for some of the myriad of basic facts about sex differences in attraction and relationship preferences. Educate yourself. Is that where we're going with this? <laughs> I mean... <sighs> um, here's the thing, Coltane. 
anyone can assert that the information that the other person is wrong is on Google. Here's an example. Coltane, you're wrong. Google it. See? That's how easy it is. To assert that your information can be found somewhere. And it's a gish gallop. There's, a, there's an infinite amount of data. Well, not an infinite, but just so much data out there that is wrong, that, that, you dis that I will disagree with and you will disagree with, that you just will not be able to break down. Telling someone to Google it is just, well, throwing, um, is just throwing like several hundred books at them and telling them to refute every single one of them or concede my point. That's not fair. I'm sorry. That is a, that is a pure gish gallop, pure shock amount argumentation, and it's nothing more than wasting someone's time. You do not get to declare a win just because your multitude of points that haven't actually been presented aren't refuted. The second thing is, if there's this myriad of information about sex differences and relationship preferences, then why the fuck were you using shoddy dating site data? If there's this so much good information out there, why the fuck were you using that? It really puts your own intellectual rigor into question. Before opening their big, stupid, ignorant mouth holes. Don't be ignorant, Colton. Don't be ignorant. Stop being ignorant, Colton. Ignorant. In an attempt to fillet Sargon during a live stream. Yes, I did that. Which is why you have absolutely no video evidence of me saying a single word. You don't show anything. It's almost like you're bullshitting. The thing is, this whole response has been so fucking passive-aggressive. You could have shown my actual points, and you could have directly responded to my direct words, but you didn't choose to do that. You chose to lie and shit-talk me. I mean, for someone talking about intellectual rigor, it's almost hypocritical. Um... But maybe it's because you heard my criticism, and you realized it was genuinely legitimate. You realized that it was actually legit, and you realized that you couldn't respond to it without lying. So, instead of actually directly addressing my criticism, you decided to go behind my back and badmouth me and insult me. Because <laughs> that's what an honest truth seeker does. Carl Zane, just for once, consider that you might be wrong. When I was doing that video on you, that was the, the, the whole thing I was thinking about. Is he right? Does he have a nugget of truth to this? Or am I wrong? Just, just anything like that. Self-doubt is a fucking good thing. And you don't seem to have a fucking ounce of it. Or maybe, maybe you do. Maybe you realise you're wrong and you're a massive bullshit artist. Because it's hard to tell with people like you these days. It's hard to tell which MGTOWs are honest and which MGTOWs are fucking lying cunts. And this is the thing about low-hanging fruit. This is kind of the best MGTOW has to offer. He is supposed to be one of the highbrow intellectuals of this group. And, well, he's... Ignorant.